Hey everybody, good morning, good morning. Pandy here of Pandy's Hair Candy and more. It is Sunday, June 9th. Yes, yeah, June 9th, 2019. And I hope everyone is doing well. I am coming on here because I dropped the ball, y'all. I want to apologize to my subscribers that have been looking forward to my review, staying consistent. I have been doing really good, y'all, and I fell off. I'm not even going to front. So please accept my humble apologies and continue to rock out with your girl. Um, I have been trying to get caught up on the shows that I'm reviewing for you all. And I've also gotten some new um, wigs and hair units. Um, stacked up here on the side so that I can have some continued content for future uploads and I'm just thanking you all and appreciate you for continuing to rock with your girl uh, my subscriber count is going up my viewer time is I'm sorry my viewer watch time has increased so I'm thanking you guys in advance um, I'm just excited to be here y'all it's Sunday I'm off today, so I'm at home chilling. I got plenty of time to try to get caught up on things. So I'm going to try to get started here. I'm going to do a couple of uploads today because I'm behind and it's getting ready to be a new week and these shows will be coming out again and I'm going to have to turn around and get back in rotation and do it all over again. All right. So um, first and foremost, to get caught up because I did a black screen voiceover um, I think it was last Saturday saying that I was gonna come on on last Sunday to give my commentary on the season 6 premiere of Iyana Fix My Life and I tell you what life happened I worked Saturday and Sunday after working all week Monday through Friday and I thought about coming in this room and recording and I was just wiped out y'all I think I laid down after I got off on Sunday evening I took my shower and everything and it was a wrap I didn't get back up again until Monday so, <laughs> so again I do apologize y'all but anyway <clears throat> since I am behind um, what I did do was I rewatched the season six premiere of Iyama Fix My Life on OWN and basically I watched it looks like it's a three-part series I watched episode one I'm sorry episode episode 616 we're in season six and it's episode 616 which was part one and then I also watched episode 617 of the season 6 premiere, which is part 2. So I'm assuming that this coming weekend will be part 3. Um, in the season 6 premiere, she comes to us with the Mitchell family. The title is called Unfinished Business. Now I know everyone who is a true Eon LeVan's aunt, Fix My Life fan is fully aware of who the Mitchell family is. We watched them come on the scene last year um, when they reached out to the show for Iyana to just basically try to get in there and try to help them mend a lot of the discord that was going on within that family. I believe they had one brother who had been murdered, um, the mama was on drugs, the daddy basically was in and out of their life, he wasn't very consistent, and there is, let me see, Michael. Marcus, Melvin, Marvin, and I can't think of the other boy's name, but there's five brothers and there's one sister, Kizzy, and Kizzy's the oldest sibling. However, she wasn't raised with them. She was raised with, I believe, a grandmother. So part one basically starts off as basically a check-in session on where are they now type of, you know, vibes where she's kind of catching up with the family to see how everyone's going and unfortunately um, to none of our surprise 
a lot of them have not stuck to the path or the script or the prescription, so to speak, that Ayanla gave them on the first time that they appeared on the show last year, as far as taking the necessary steps to do the work and get their family um, back intact. And, you know, just to try to mend things and kind of, I don't know, um, get in a better space so that they could try to, you know, become a healthier family unit. Um, Miss Kizzy has basically dipped on the family. She was kind of being consistent and keeping in touch, but she kind of dipped on them. She terminated all her social media accounts. She wasn't staying in touch consistently. And it was an issue because they already had this distance, you know, amongst them growing up. And so with her being the oldest, the brothers just kind of was like, you know, we already expected this from her. We knew it was going to be like this. It is what it is. Um, Michael, who I believe is the oldest brother, Michael has a little bit of developmental issues. And actually, in part one of this season, he kind of acted out real tough. That's where it ended last week. Um, he hopped up. He, he had this loud outburst. The mama, all of them was just kind of going back and forth to the point where Iyanla had to hop up and get ghetto and ratchet and kind of start screaming at him. I think she told him to quit acting like a bunch of park apes. <laughs> so, you know... Usually, Miss Ayala don't go there with the guests, but unfortunately, just sitting down, talking with them, and trying to gauge everybody and see where they were from last year to now, it ended up in a lot of dysfunction. So, I mean, it makes sense to call the title Unfinished Business. And I apologize, guys, because I'm kind of jumping all over the place because I'm kind of mixing what happened in part one, being that I didn't do commentary on it last week, and what happened in part two, being that I just freshly watched it today. So forgive me, y'all. Charge it to my heart. Um, I will do better. I do. I do come to you guys attesting that I am making it my business to get on. Um, on my game and do better with my reporting. Um, I also have to come on here and bring y'all up to speed in um, the other show, Games People Play. And I see two other shows are coming back that I am going to add into the rotation. So I got to get it together and get on a schedule with y'all and just stay consistent no matter what. You know, when I get off work, I'm tired or not. If I want to keep consistent, I have to just put in the effort and the work. But nonetheless, I digress. I'm getting off track. Um, in part two, you know, part one was basically a, okay, let's touch base and see where everyone is. Basically, Michael has his outburst. He throws the mama under the bus. For some reason, he has an issue with Kizzy, and I don't know if it's because he's the older brother and she's the oldest sister. I don't know, but they have some deep-rooted issues where they don't particularly care for each other. And during that argument where he had that outburst and jumped up and kind of started going crazy, he kind of threw the mom under the bus and said, you know, just put it out there. You don't even like Kizzy. You can't stand her. You tell me this all the time. And Iyanla had to point out to LaRonda, whom is the mother, bad mother, you never tell one of your children that you dislike another child of yours. That is their sibling. You just don't do that. Secondly, you don't throw your mama under the bus and something she shared in confidence with you. So it was just crazy. Um... And all the other siblings just sat by on the couch looking as it unfolded because it's like they're desensitized to it because they see and hear it all the time. It's just very crazy. I really hope that Ayama can help this family. I think that, you know, they can become a stronger unit, but it's going to take some work. It's going to really take some work. And the mere fact that they're back shows it's going to definitely probably take more than what they did last time. I mean, and the fact that they're breaking it down into three parts shows that. That just, 
even further clarifies it's going to definitely take some serious work now marcus was the kind of hard acting brother last year he was bald headed he's i want to say the second to the oldest he always kind of blamed himself for not really looking out for his brothers with them being especially marvin and melvin those are the two gay brothers um let me think marvin is the one who has the solid black hair he acknowledged on last year that you know he was assaulted he was sexually violated as a child because remember they were in and out of foster care you know they were in the system there were times where they was homeless they was living in cars and things happened um as a result of that with him getting older he i guess he became more comfortable um and accepting within himself of being gay however he's not really openly gay if that makes sense whereas melvin melvin is the brother with the blonde in his hair melvin is comfortable in his skin he's gay he is fearless with it he's here and he's out you can see it in him he's um a very effeminate gay um and he's open with it and you know it is what it is with him and for whatever reason they're very close in age but they clash they clash more so than any of the other siblings so um in part two iyama tries to get them together and delve into what exactly the tension is there um but i digress because i'm jumping around i'm moving forward in part one i believe that was part one iyana sat down with marcus the bald one who now has the braids he looks very different um i don't know what was going on with him but in no shade he just he he looks like there's something going on with him that may be substance abuse related and um he looks like he's going through some sort of struggle and he um shared or iana shared that it had been brought to her attention that he tried to take his own life since last year um and when she questioned him about that he pretty much said it was resolved he's all good now it's nothing so when she separates them and you know tries to get a little bit more into the conversation he has a breakdown he starts to cry he shares with us that his children his two sons are starting to exhibit behavior of that of which he was doing when he was their age getting in trouble at school being disrespectful being disobedient being defiant and i believe it's starting to take a toll on him and he's feeling hopeless like you know how can i how can i be there for them when i can't even be here for me you know and he doesn't really know what direction to go in to try to do better so he kind of i don't know i can't really put it into words y'all have to check out the episode but that was my take on what i got from the conversation that he and iyanla briefly had um she also talked with and i don't know why his name is not coming to me and i apologize guys the dark-skinned brother he's the most calmest one last year he had dreads this year he's kind of clean cut got a nice little short fade real calm and quiet um and i she calls him pastor i cannot remember his name but in her brief conversation with him he just shares you know i think we all got our issues the problem is they don't know how to turn it off I know how to turn it off and I know when to turn it on. So moving on, she also meets with Kizzy in front of the group and the mother. That was when they started the arguing with Michael because she was trying to get a, a feel from her like, you know, what happened? Why? last year you were saying you wanted to you know have this relationship with your mom you wanted to be able to do girly things talk with her on the phone go out to eat get your nails done this that and third and that you were going to make an effort to keep in touch with her and you've backed away completely you've changed your phone number you don't stay in touch you know what happened 
and she kind of shared that she felt like Marvin was the reason why she felt like Marvin is always inserting himself into the middle he's always in the business between her and her mom's relationship she even shared that there's been times where LaRonda the mother has called her on the phone and Marvin will be on the phone muted or Marvin will call her and LaRonda the mama will be on the phone muted so I don't know what the heck is going on with that dynamic but it's something going on <laughs> Um, let me see. Lastly, in the ending part of episode two, she did get, Yana did attempt to get Marvin and Melvin, the two boys, the two gay sons or brothers together, sat them in the room, knee to knee, just to kind of get them to try to figure out what their true problem is with each other and make it a long story short. Marvin was very closed off. He wasn't really talking where you could see the hurt and the anguish on Melvin, the blonde one. Um, you know, he just wasn't understanding. And apparently he's younger. He was like, we're both gay. I have to deal with, you know, discrimination in the outside world. When I come to my older brother, who is also gay, I feel like he should be there for me. He should understand and be able to help me through these things. And Marvin just was sitting there looking at him and he said, I feel like he looks at me with disgust. It was very difficult to see, y'all. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what Ayala's going to be able to do with this family. Honestly, I hope that she can help them. I really do. But I don't know how she's going to go about doing it. She did share that she felt like Melvin represents to Marvin the part of himself that he hates and she asked him was that an accurate description and he said it was so in the ending part of the episode of, of the part two episode Melvin was very angry um, he felt like Yanla was dismissing Marvin's behaviors and actions but kind of holding him to a higher standard so nonetheless he was upstairs packing up his stuff making a big scene getting ready to storm out and leave Iyanla and crew tried to pull him to the side to get him to understand that he needed to stay and stick it out you know to complete the process so that he could move forward with his healing and he just wasn't here for it he was crying and carrying on and he was very upset and he said he wanted to leave. He didn't want to disrespect her, you know, and he felt like if he stayed, that's what it would lead to. And unfortunately, that is where part two ended, y'all. Um, this particular season opener is very good. It's very entertaining. Um, I always enjoy when Ayala brings back people that, you know, she's had on the show before and you know they didn't quite make the cut based on the advice that she gave them on the first time around but she sends them back out with new tools i enjoy seeing that um and i hope that it's not just for entertainment i really truly hope that these people are going to get the help that they need so that they can move forward in their healing and ultimately i'm here for it y'all i thank you guys for tuning in and hearing my part um, my commentary and my review and again y'all I do apologize for the delay with coming back on and giving it to you guys but I thank you so much and appreciate y'all for rocking with me continue to like share and please subscribe y'all I need to get my subscriber counts up I'm working diligently on that so please subscribe all right until next time y'all bye